Hello, my name is Elizabeth Cosgrave Hernandez. I'm an assistant professor in biomedical engineering at the Texas A&M University. And my research is focused on tissue engineering and developing biomaterial scaffolds to help the body heal itself. So one of the biggest challenges in developing a biomaterial scaffold is you're having to address so many constraints. So we have to, for example, for bone, bone is a structural tissue and when you think about it, it has things like we have to have it be porous so that cells can come in and actually start doing that regeneration process but we also need really good mechanical properties because they, it has to be able to withstand you walking and running and jumping while it's healing so on top of that it, we want the scaffold to go away as the tissue is regenerated so now it has to degrade so we have to basically juggle all of these parameters in terms of it has to be biocompatible, so we're not causing any detrimental effects when we implant it. It has to be porous, but maintain good mechanical properties. And then the final thing that we're doing that's really innovative in our lab is creating an injectable scaffold, which will really allow for better surgical implantation and allow for better integration into that defect. So it's really about being able to do the cost benefit and trade-offs for each of those material properties um, while meeting your design goals. And we can do that by just being more creative. And so we're taking a technique <clears throat> called emulsion templating to make our bone grafts. And this technique is not new. It's used for things like making filtration supports, um, catalyst supports, some other application. It creates a high porous foam. Um, but we're going to use it for bone grafts materials. And so we have to take all the biocompatibility and biodegradation uh, aspects that we need and use the and then translate a a strategy was used in industry to the biomedical field and so we do a lot we play with the chemistry a lot and we're able to do get a lot of things by being able to translate it um, and add new functionality to it <clears throat> and so we in principle we're just making an emulsion kind of like mayonnaise is an emulsion and so for us we're using water and we're using our polymer and we mix them together um, and so what it comes out before it becomes rigid it's the consistency of mayonnaise so we can actually inject it in the surgical suite it cures or hardens at the body temperature so there's no external um, initiation process that you have to do it just cures and becomes hard within a, a couple hours um, and we get really good integration with the bone um, when we do that. So we can get, we can look at the micro scale using a technique called scanning electron microscopy and really see that the, our foam has fully integrated with the bone. So it stabilizes that defect. So your, the break in the bone stabilizes the break, gives it structural integrity. And it also allows for cells to come from the bone into the graft and start that regeneration process. So in addition to understanding the science but how to, behind how to develop new tissue engineering scaffolds, we're also interested in how do we actually translate these to the clinic? How do we go from the bench top to the bedside? And so we talk to people at the Texas Institute of Preclinical Studies. We have very active collaborations with them in terms of understanding what are the preclinical testing that we need to do to be able to translate this to a medical device that could impact human health. And we also talk to clinicians. So we talk to clinicians, orthopedic surgeons, and vascular surgeons in terms of how what they're concerned about in terms of taking this and using it in the surgical suite. And finally, we're very interested in the commercialization aspects in terms of how do we in protect the intellectual property so this would be able to be turned into a commercial device.